There it goes. So the other day, I, uh, actually it was yesterday, I was going out to karaoke, and I thought of a pretty good pun, and my roommate was loading up Dark Souls 3, and so I go, hey man, I hope I don't get carried away at karaoke, and you see the wheels turn in his head, and when it clicks, he starts raising his voice, going, ah, no, ah, bad pun, ah. And uh, the music for the loading screen of Dark Souls 3 starts at that moment. <laughs> and I found myself raising my arms and falling to my knees. <laughs> <laughs> because the moment was so epic! <laughs> right, so... This is uh, Idle Thoughts. I am your host, uh, Damien Bishop. Uh, episode... Do I really want to catalog these with episodes? I mean, I plan on going back... And as I find out more information about these various topics, build out from there and uh, catalog and chronolog and modify my thoughts and opinions on the matter with the information I've gathered and more or less keep it up to date with what I found out. So let's talk about a long running topic that everyone hates to talk about. Abortion. Now, in case you haven't noticed, I am not an uh, alternative male, iron male, iron man, uh, fee, female, I, I'm not a woman. <sighs> so, do take in mind that I'm going to be coming to this from a rational point of view. I'm not going to get emotional on the matters, or at least I think I won't. So please forgive me if some of the things I say come across as crass or heartless. Now, when it comes to the topic of abortion, um, where to start? The human soul, uh, when it enters the body, well, <clears throat> anyone who has um, looked into the topic can tell you that obviously after a third trimester, or after the beginning of third trimester, it's very much human being. I think I'll stand with that one, personally. Some people talk about how as soon as the egg, sperm goes into the egg, it's a, uh, it's a person at that point. Well then, well, I'm not so sure about that. You see, miscarriages happen a lot. And it's a rather personal matter. Matter of fact, this whole thing should be more or less determined by women themselves. Guys kind of hope that she wants to have the kid. It is of their realm. Their power is creation. We, uh... We just bounce around and bumble around and make stuff and hurt stuff and break stuff. It's guys. Guys are guys. Women are women. Anyway, so the point I'm getting to with the miscarriage thing is that when a woman has a miscarriage, 
would that, by the logic of as soon as the sperm enters the egg, mean that a soul has come into this realm, existed for a short, brief time, and is taken from us? There is no stopping miscarriages. Matter of fact, there are ways of going about making miscarriages happen, such as being uh, very overly physically active during that time frame. I mean, like, uh, working out for hours on end, physically speaking. And, well, unfortunately, this is a realm of knowledge I am unacquainted with, so I will not delve into it, because I have no idea. I'm merely trying to explain my limited viewpoint on the matter, as opposed to what has been coined as mansplaining. Now... The real crux I have found of the abortion topic is about potential. This child will have the potential to be Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. But that goes into the potential of every man, every woman. You see, every person has capacity to be the greatest, the absolute best, or the worst, the most wicked. That is, that's the problem with humanity. At, at its core, we have the potential to be great, to do great things, and yet, in the same capacity, we can do terrible, monstrous things. Matter of fact, we do terrible, monstrous things in the names of bigger ideas than ourselves. Look at the church. Look at the police force. And, sadly, look at the army. The military. In any and every one of its forms. In the right circumstance, anything can be made heroic. The foundation of this, then, comes down to choice. Do we force women to be baby incubators? Or let them choose whether or not to have the kid? This is another part of the War of Sexes, right? This is another part of keeping women chained. We constrict their sexuality. We steal that power from them. That's insane to me. But say we take the choice from them. We force the woman to carry the child to term. And, well, the kid comes into the world. 
despite that circumstance. It's a joyous thing. Hey, a new kid, new world, new possibilities, the potential for great or for ill is right there. Awesome. But what about support for that new life? What about helping that child be the best that they can be? Like two parents staying together to raise a single son. You know, teaching him what it is to be a man and what he should seek for in a woman. Or vice versa for a single daughter. By removing those examples, you cripple that child's future, for you force, say, the boy, without the mom, to go out into the world starry-eyed and confused on what women are like, what you should avoid, and just basic communications. I, it's... <sighs> for the most part. Beyond a human personality, we are blank slates, especially when it comes to society. It's this nebulous tool we all utilize to coordinate and survive. It's the social contract, right? But by removing said father or said mother, by being part of a single parent household, you have removed elements of that person's future. They're going to have to work hard to even acquire that realm of knowledge, to overcome that limitation. You've set unnecessary limitations in their way. One of the many reasons why women choose to have abortions, from what I understand, is they can't afford it. I can't afford to live on my own, much less a kid. And I am 30. Three with zeros. Or, I don't know if this format is reversed. So, economic times are hard, and it's not a matter of how much you work, how much you grind. The only way to overcome your current economic limitation is to go beyond legal economics. It's the only way to get ahead. Sorry. That's what it takes, breaking the law, to succeed economically. And if you are one of the many people, the majority of people, that cannot afford, you know, this screaming, noisy, demanding, blank slate of a little bundle of joy, then you're a person with reason, you know. We don't all have good support structures, socially, emotionally, you know, financially, dear God, it takes a lot to raise a kid. Screw the responsibility. I'm talking about just finances here. And without help, without that foundational structure in place, it's easy to understand why a woman would choose not to have a kid. You know. What if she's young? And, you know, like most young girls do, dates 
an absolute blockhead and and demonetization whatever asshole you know like women have this thing where they want to go after the guy who is large and in charge and you know takes what he want well takes what he want, wants that sounds like rape to me the point being is that young women definitely don't choose the right guy and if they're lucky enough to they won't appreciate him abuse him and throw him back into the river because plenty of fish in the sea right the point being She won't have, more or less, a good financial foundation to raise the kid. She knows it's going to be a mess up, right? It's going to be a, a crap shoot. It's going to be a messed up, dirty situation. And, you know, those who stick it out yes, are going to love their kid and be so happy they did it. At the cost of the kid. You're not ready as a parent. It happens. You know what happened back in the day? The kid died. The world moved on. It's a hard, cold, unforgiving place. And the only light, the only warmth and hope we have, is from each other. <sighs> and yet, these struggling young women, who, yeah, made poor choices, probably a collection, sure, don't want to take another person into this world, into this life, because of any number of reasons. I say they should have the choice. We could make a pill to handle things chemically. I don't know the options. I'm thinking of a recent case, well, recent to me, of uh, doctors in um, one of the uh, southern incestual states, Louisiana or Minnesota, or not Minnesota, that's Midwest, that refused to do more abor abortions. I get it. There is, this is one of those nuanced topics that people get emotionally wrapped up in. And it's hard, you know. It's hard to take a life. Why do you think you've never had to kill cow before? Yeah, economical reasons, but still, you know, it's hard. To develop yourself in that way. Farmers have to do it from a very young age. Hey, I named this chicken Betsy. Well, I'm having Betsy for dinner, okay. And you may be upset with me comparing humans to animals. But what do you think you are? Are you so arrogant to think you are special somehow oh god the flame wars <sighs> right focus focus what so abortions the argument comes down to potential the real point 
comes down to choice. Women should be able to choose, especially when they're young. It's a thing, you know. What would change it, I mean, beyond good sex education, but America is more invested in our wars and military than we are proper sexual education. And if you're religious, do it in the butt for Jesus. It'll save everyone a lot of problems. If abortion expenses are too much, both for the government and for family, blah, 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 blah. What about, um, IEDs? Getting your tubes temporary, temporarily tied? Um... You know, keeping track of your uh, safe days, as it were. I'd say, <coughs> <coughs> don't get laid, but let's be honest. If you are thirsty, you're gonna drink. If you're hungry and you don't eat, well... You're going to get more, more hungry. And sometimes things just happen, you know. Perhaps it is beyond my ken, my understanding. And to say that girls from the age of um, 13 and up should get uh, IEDs for when they're sexually active. And that's another point because comments, comments, my mind keeps going back to the comments and people's comments about commentary. When a girl is ready to get laid, to go on her back for the first time, there's nothing that will stop that. Ever. She will find a way. Women's power is in their sexuality. Look at almost every famous woman or pop icon. Betty Boop. Jessica Rabbit, Marilyn Monroe, Cleopatra, one of the smartest, most gifted rulers that has graced the world, is a sex icon. Women should have the power over women. Guys should stay out of it. When it comes to sex, when it comes, well, to the actual raised kids, that's a different matter. But when it comes to the babies, it's the woman's domain. Guys are out of jurisdiction. So, this is my basic outline of my thoughts on abortion. This is more or less my current standing on the logical crux of the topic. Be sure to educate me in the comments below. And as always, 
This is Idle Thoughts with Damien Bishop. Why do I do this? Why do I delve into the worst of topics and thought experiments? Why do I care about any of this? And ask the hard question like a real journalist should. Because I am.